So at the moment, our game is coming along pretty well. And the thing with any game is that you can keep adding and adding and adding to it and never quite be done. So in what we have is um, today plus two more days of class. And we still need to cover a little bit more coding, but we probably will not do a couple of things together, but I expect them to be done by you. So that means we have not together done anything with the help screen that if right now when I launch my game and I go to help, I'm stuck there. Obviously, I want that screen to work when you turn it in. So all it needs is a back button. So we're not going to cover the back button on the help screen. You should be able to do that. We've dealt with buttons over and over and over, so you should be able to get that to work. So we're not going to have a time to do it, but you should get the help to work. And it's just a back button. So when you actually start to play, then we have the front screen. This works just fine. If you want to do anything more to it, you can. You know, we didn't talk about like touching the sign and something happens. You can do that if you want. It's not required. It won't be, it won't be, it won't take any points away or give you any if you make this gate do more than what we did. You just open it and you're in. That's fine. Then on the front door, we did what I wanted to do in there, which is that the front door doesn't do anything. It just wiggles. What we will do is make it also play sound. I want sound to happen in the gate. We will definitely do that, that when you hit the gate, it makes a creaking sound. And then when you tap the door, it also makes a sound. So we will do that. Um, we are able to move this rock around and only the right window does anything. You can make the left window do something if you want, not required. But when you then hit the, the window and it breaks, it would be nice if I hear the glass break. We will do that today, making the glass sound break. So once you get past that, we're going to go to the hallway here. And we worked on the painting so that it interacts, it falls. Okay. If you want to do something with the carpet, you can do it. We won't, it's not required, but if you want to pull the carpet and there's something there, you know, a dead, a dead body or something, fine. Um, then on the right, okay, for the right side, we went to the right side and we have some hit points on this thing and it'll most likely kill us. So on the right hallway, there, oops, on the right hallway, there is the ability to, if they kill the boss, then they can go through the door. Most likely they won't. If you want to do anything with the painting, or if you want to do something with that second door, you could. We're not going to. We don't quite have the time for it, but if you want to, you can do something there. We have that boss coming at you. Most likely it'll kill you. It goes to the game over screen. We're going to make the game over screen work, which is not too complicated, but I want to make game over work because eventually when we have you win the game, it's very similar in terms of play again or quit. So once we make game over work, you will be in charge of making a uh, good game work. We probably won't quite get to it, but again, it's play or quit, just like game over, play or quit. So once we make uh, the bad ending work, you'll have to extrapolate how the good ending will work, and it's just kind of a little copy and paste and changing a little code. So we're going to work on that. Now also, uh, regarding the left hallway, so this is just another place that there's possible things to click on. One of them is good, and the other ones could be bad. Um, for this one, uh, this one's going to be kind of open-ended about what you would like to do here, because you can, when you go to this screen, what if you pull the, the little rope on the top there and the, and the uh, the crawl space or whatever, the attic opens up and then a monster comes out and you're dead. This could be one that now when you interact with things, most of them kill you except going through the correct door. You try to open this, the door on the right and then a demon comes out and you're dead. And they play again. Okay, I try to open the top. It kills me also. So um, the correct way there. So on that one, um, we will see if we do it together. Uh, but logically, from what we've done on the other rooms, you should be able to make this one work. One thing will take you to the good ending, and the other things won't. Because what I want to focus, focus on is the music. And the music will be a little complicated because I want different music for different scenes. I want there to be uh, music playing during the welcome screen. But then when I actually start the game, I want different music to happen there. 
when I go to the bad ending, I want different music. When I want to, the, when I go to the good ending, different music. When I interact with things, when I break that glass, I want music. I want sound effects. So we're going to focus on after we make the bad ending work. We're going to focus on music, and and music's a little complicated because as you played with Tap Frenzy, you might have seen, well, when I play the game, but then I go to help and I come back, the music goes away, never comes back. You know, we didn't get a chance to fully make the music work there. And I wanted to make, well, when we tap on the little creatures on, on Tap Frenzy, I wanted them to make a sound. We didn't quite get to that. So adding sound effects and background music will be our main focus right after we work on the game over. So that means I will make a note here for a little bit later. If I don't see it, remind me, but I'm going to have something here, vote. We're going to vote on something a little later, after, I, after we do the main lecture, but we'll come back to that. So to work at the moment, let's go over to the bad ending scene. The bad ending scene has two things to do. One, you press play, and it goes back to play again, or you press quit, and it quits the app. So that'll be very similar to what we did with Tap Frenzy, so this will be a refresher. Based on all the knowledge you've gotten so far, you could do some Easter eggs. What if a person clicks on something besides play or quit? In mine, I've only got a tombstone. But if you've designed other things, what, am I, what about making those do things? What about if I click on the tombstone and it breaks open and then something comes out? And it says, congratulations, you're a winner. I don't know what, but you could do different things besides what we're about to do. And that's hopefully in any of these classes that you take, any of these creative classes, hopefully you go on beyond what you get into the class. Hopefully you do a little bit more. But let's make this play and quit work. What we need to do first with play, uh, I need to separate the play button to its own layer. So try to select your play button, and I will cut it. Make a new layer. And call that play again. So play button is on its own layer. We'll do play button first. That needs to become a symbol. That needs to become a symbol, which we'll press F8, turn that into MC ending bad play. So it's a movie clip in the ending, which is bad, and it's the play again button. So instance name. I'm sorry, uh, symbol name. Then the instance name will be something similar so that we can write some code for it. Up on the instance name, um, ending bad play underscore btn. So ending bad play btn in our actions layer. We'll open up our actions. The name of that instance, 
So you should be getting used to that everything you need to uh, click on is going to have some sort of add event listener. Specifically, a touch event dot underscore touch tap comma fn ending bad play in this particular scene the bad ending I've got an object with a name ending bad play BTN with an event listener specifically when I touch tap it Place the function ending bad play, so that means on the next line function ending bad play parentheses colon void curly braces. So that's the usual. In the parentheses we have event colon touch event. So that it so that the function is properly defined. Oops, function is misspelled over here. That's why it did not change color. So if a person gets to the bad ending, they will probably want to play again. So this will take them back to the beginning. Now this is the part where you can choose. Um, take them back to the welcome screen. The welcome screen then gives them the option to start to play or go to help. Or if you want them to go directly well to the first screen of the game. They want to play again, so go to the first screen of the game. You'll be able to pick which of those two you want. I'm going to go to welcome, but if you want, you can make it go to gate. This is the part where we then have movie clip, parentheses, dot, go to and play. This is our code for a button to jump us to different parts of the game. Inside of the movie clip, we have this dot root, and then in the go to and play, we say what frame, comma, quotes of what scene. So right here is where then you can choose to take me to the welcome or the first uh, screen of the game. So in quotes, SC welcome in my case. If you wanted to go right back to your first. Um, right back to your first uh, game scene. You can put that if you want. But this sets up the, the play again button. That's nothing new. We've done this stuff over and over. We did it on the Tap Frenzy game, and we've done a version of this over and over so far on this one. That's why, like I said, on the help screen, I'm not going to go step by step how to make help work. Based on what we did right now, you should be able to make help work. I want that back button to go back. So you should be able to get that to work on your own, on help. But what we also want on the, on the bad ending, um, we also have that quit. So I want to make the quit button work. Now, while we're already here in the code, let's write the code for that thing, the quit button, and then we'll make the quit button fully set up. 
because play again works because you've got a symbol with an instance name. Quit is not a symbol with an instance name yet. We'll do that this time second. While we're already here in the code, I'm just going to copy all of the code that's already here, starting with the event listener, except for the stop, and paste it. Because again, this is how you'll be able to do your version of something that we don't get to. Copy code that already exists and change it. I need to change four things in this code. So I can either type it all again and possibly make mistakes, or change four things. One of them is the name of the instance, which doesn't exist yet, but logically ending bad quit btn. I'll turn that into the quit button soon enough. And when we tap that, end function ending bad quit. So instead of playing it again, we're going to quit. So if we mention ending bad quit right here, we define it on the next line, ending bad quit. Um, oops, there's a mistake here actually. Not ending bad btn, not bad, sorry. Function, yeah, there's a mistake here, whoops. Before copying and pasting it, this is wrong right here. The, um, I'm saying let's run a function after we click this button. Right here is supposed to be the name of the function, not the name of the button. We're defining a button, but there's already a button, so that's a mistake. That's supposed to say ending bad play. I didn't notice that until I read it again, so be careful here before you copy and paste. Let's fix that. The definition of the function ending bad play when we try to use it up here. And then I'll copy and paste and make the change. So let's back up on that function, ending bad play, not the button itself, but the play. And now when I copy that and paste it, so ending bad quit btn, function ending bad quit, function ending bad quit, this line will be, will be different here, line 9. It'll be actually very different, but I'll write that in a moment. Here we have quit. And here we have quit. So similar to the one above, but all of these say play, and these say quit. If this were in the help screen, I would have, you know, go back btn dot event listener function, go back welcome function, go back welcome, and then it'll say movie quit this room, go to and play one uh, scene welcome, so that it goes back in the help screen. The difference of quitting is one of the few instances where we will see something like this, where it says native application. Dot native application. The spelling is different, however. It's just the way it is for some reason. Capital N, capital A, native application should become blue. Dot native application, only capital A should become blue. Dot exit, parentheses zero. And then a quick note quits the app. This is the only place where we use code that looks like that. It looks different than the syntax we've looked at other places, but not completely. There's still some sort of object.method that we've done before. Here's an object.method, object.method, no object. So it's just that it's different. Native application and all of that code just basically quits the game if you get to the bad ending. So there's always 
two sides of the coin when we interact with things. The code plus the actual thing visually on the screen. For the first one, we did both. We've got the code for the play button plus the play button has been prepared. This one we've only got half. We've got the code, but we don't have the quit button prepared. So now for the quit, quit button, I have to separate it to its own layer, have to turn it into a symbol, and have to give it the name that we made up right here. The quit button is going to be turned into a symbol that will have that instance name. So I need to select my quit button. to select um, only enough of it over here. So I need to move the quit button to its own layer. Maybe call it quit game. Paste it in there. Turn that into a symbol. And then give it the instance name from the code. And what I do a lot myself because I am. Um, lose track of what I call these things. Uh, I always go back to where I wrote it in the code and copy and paste it just so that it's consistent. So that's going to become a symbol. This will be MC ending bad quit. And any of these names of things that we make up ourselves, remember we can set them to be the um, whatever names we want them to be, whatever makes sense. I see a lot of tutorials online. The problem, however, is that I see a lot of tutorials online with people writing really short names of things, and they know what it means, but I can't uh, read their minds. So when I see people's code and it looks like, you know, A equals X, well, what is even A? Well, they meant that, you know, game score equals X. So sometimes I write these names really long, but hopefully they make sense. And as long as you keep them consistent, you know, spelled properly, since, since we're inventing them, as long as we write them the same way, even if I misspell that as ending bad quite, instead of quit, I accidentally put an E, quite, instead of, or quiet, instead of quit, it'll work. You know, this is something that I made up. If in the code I call this kitty cat, and I call the instance name there kitty cat, it'll work, because it has to be consistent. And that should be what I need there. I've got both of these buttons on their own layer with their own instance name. I've got the code that references each one. I've got code that we've seen over and over to move somewhere. And then I've got, for this particular app, brand new, the code to exit the app, which is the same as with a Tap Frenzy game, so it's not completely new. I'm going to save it and run it to confirm that, that it works. I want to get to the bad ending. So I want to let that monster chomp me on the right hallway and get to the bad ending. And then I want to try the play again button, go through it, go to the bad ending, then I'll try the quit button. And if the app does quit, then your code works up to this point. And then we'll work on some music. So try that out, see if it works. Let me know if it doesn't. And then we'll, mo we'll move on to music in a moment. So I'm going to try this out in the debugger. All right, so I'm going to play the game, go through the gate. Throw the rock, go 
to the right hallway, let the monster get me. I met game over, I press play, it goes back to the main title screen. Again, if you wanted to just go back straight to the first level, the first screen, you can do that. I'll play it again, go through this again. So the more complex you make this, the more that you realize you're going to have to go through your own adventure to test each separate section of the, of the project. I'm going to go through that again. This time I'll go over to the dead screen again, the bad ending. I'll press quit, and it does quit back to Adobe Animate. So if that worked, very good. If it didn't, let's make sure that works. Question. As we confirm that this works. So we're going to start to add music in just a moment. And I have some music files ready for you. Obviously, um, on your own game, I, I, would, um, I would want that you have your own choices of music. So the music I'm going to give you might not be the best choice for what you want. But I'm going to give you some music tracks. That means we're going to need to, if you want to, you, you need to hear the music that you're going to add to the game to confirm that it works. You can't really debug it and not hear anything. So if you, if anyone wants headphones, I've got some headphones. Uh, if you have your own, you can use your own. Does anyone need any headphones? I've got a bunch. Well, if you need headphones, just come on up here and I'll give you one. Alright, anyone else needs headphones? And um, I think you need to plug them in. Let me see how these work again. It's just one plug, but you've got a plug. You have, um, there's two plugs at the top. Uh, plug it into the second one. There's an icon of a headset as the first one, which is headphones plus a mic. And then the second one is a... Um, Use a regular headphone. So if you plug it in on the tower, I think the quality is better. If you plug it in on the cable in front of the monitor, I think the quality is okay. But if you plug it in down to the tower, I think it's better. It's... So if you're using headphones, plug it into the second circular plug from the top. And just to confirm that, that your volume is working, um, I would uh, click the little speaker and then uh, move it around so that it makes a little sound. So, so try to move that little speaker to see if you hear it. If you don't plug it into the other one, I guess, but try to move that one around. So just to confirm, you can change your volume, move it somewhere, let it go, it should make a little ping sound, then move it somewhere else. And if you hear the sound, then you've got sound. 
Okay, so again, as for sound, you can eventually pick your own music that you like. Once you've got this basic sound working, then adding your own music is not too complex because you'll just need to replace my music with your music. The code will still work the same. But I've got various soundtracks for you, and these are in the web design folder. So what you want to do is, is minimize animate for a moment and go to the web design folder into the CIS 126 folder and in there I have invent request sounds copy that whole folder copy that adventure request sounds folder to your project folder so from the network folder copy the whole folder to your project folder I'll play a quick preview of what these sounds are like, and then we will um, write the code. So let's see. Okay, so this sort of fun music first music that plays when the game starts. When the game actually runs, Okay, so that's one sound that's going to play when the main game happens. We've got... Um, This other sound here that's gonna play when it's game over. You know, some sad, slow, melancholy music when the game is over. So, three different soundtracks that I want to play during during the game. And um, then there's other things like sound effects. Okay, so when the door opens up, there's a sound of it creaking open, wood creak. What else? Okay, when, when something breaks. All right, so different sound effects and music. Um, I, I, we have this main music plus the game over music plus game main game music and we have some sound effects so we're going to incorporate all of those uh, into the project so what we'll do when we get back to Adobe Animate let's go to file import to library so when you do your own music it'll be the same sort of process uh, you download your music from somewhere like the free music archive or YouTube from the creator studio if you need help on getting back from Creator Studio, you can ask me. So I'll import, and I want to go to my folder where I've got all of those sounds. You can actually select them all at once if you shift click. Click the first one, then hold shift and click the last one, or drag a little box around them all to select them. I want to import all those sounds. Instead of one at a time, you can select them all at once, click open, they all get added to your project. It's going to import them all. It'll be part of your project in the library. So now if you look in your library, you have, you have these different sounds. So you can also preview them there. some files, I've downloaded some music, I've imported them to the game, 
Um, these, this music will play through code. We're not putting it into the timeline like a more basic project. We need the music to, to happen for certain uh, events. When the game starts, when the game loads up, play a certain sound. When you go to the first screen, play a different sound. When you go to another screen, play a different one. And also, importantly, don't let these sounds overlap. I don't want the title screen, the scene welcome music to play at the same time that the gate screen music is playing. So we need to program that one turns off so that another turns on. Unless we do that, we will have overlapping music. And then of course I want that when I break the when I break the window, it plays the break the crash one sound when I need it to play. In order for all of that to happen, these sounds have to have linkage. These sounds have to have a sort of an instance name. We give them an instance name in the library, sort of. So let's start with the first one, crash one. Right click that one, and then you have properties. You get this properties about the quality of your music, but what we care about is the action script tab up here. Right now, this music cannot be accessed through action script code. So we'll turn on export for action script. We'll turn on the check mark. Let's use this via code. And it says, what instance name would you like to give this? Whatever name it gives you there is just going to be based on the name of your file. So eventually, when we do something like it's coming, that the instance name will be, it's coming right there. But what I want instead is to maybe rename these so that I, uh, I know exactly what they are. So instead of it saying crash one, we will call this glass one underscore SND. Um, this is a sound effect. So all of the sounds that are sound effects, meaning they will play on one particular instant, they will all have an SND at the end. So when we do these other ones, the monster, the, 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 the debris, the, the glass, whatever, all of these will have whatever underscore SND, because they're just sound effects, quick sound effects that play. When we deal with the main music, which will be 4 dash, it's coming, and the rain, those will have a slightly different name. So once you add SND at the top, click Update. And then this name, of course, will matter a little later. And then click OK. It'll just uh, let you know that this it has not been used for code yet. Are you sure you want to? It's going to keep asking us every time we do this. So we will say, don't show this again, and just click OK. So now if you see right here, this particular MP3 has an instance name, so to speak, via linkage. And you can do the same thing here, debris hit will be glass 2 sound. So we'll go to debris, right click, properties, action script, export, and I'll call that one glass 2 SND. On all of these I'm going to do something very similar Next one I'll do growl one and growl two. And I have knife, knife one. Uh, we don't really have anything in the game at the moment that requires a, a sharp knife sound, but I'm putting that in there in case you want to add it somehow. So we want to click the update and then the OK. Next I'll go to Female Monster Growl 1, so right-click Properties, Action Script, Export, just keep it simple, Growl 1 underscore SND, Update, and then OK. So I'm just taking, instead of, it, instead of me having to write the huge instance name, Female, growl, female Monster Growl 1, I'm just shortening it down, really short, lowercase, easy to type, Growl 1, SND. 
next one, Growl 2, SND. So after you update it, you're OK. We'll go to the next one. And then knife one. So first I'm doing these five sound effects. So I end them with S and D for sound, sound effect. Or we could do SFX, sound effects. Um, then we will do the four dash, it's coming, and the rain, very similar, but call them like main music, you know, death music, um, help music, whatever. I, I'm going to call them something that is more meaningful in the code, because four dash, you know, doesn't sound like anything, but when I name it something meaningful, uh, I'll know what it is in the code. So. Let's do four dash export. Four dash will happen for the welcome screen, so I'll call that welcome MUS Muse, main music, or maybe BG, background. So these can be called anything you want, but for me it makes sense that when I see something with S and D, it's just a sound effect, it'll play quickly, it's done. But things with an MUS for Muse, music, these will play background music longer. So this is the music that plays in the welcome screen. This is happening in the four dash file. So update that and then OK. For It's Coming, I'm going to use that as the main music that plays all the time. So main music. You could have different music playing at different parts of the game. That's fine. We're going to focus on one music plays throughout all of, the, all of the rooms that I go into. You could, based on what we're learning here, add different music to different parts of the game. You know, as you get closer to the game, the, the music changes. If you, as you get closer to the end, the music changes. When you're in the first parts of the house, it's a certain music. As you get further into the house, it's different music. But I'm just going to have one main music playing throughout. Update. OK. We then have near the end, oh, uh, we have two of them. We have the rain, that'll be the music when it's game over, and whoops, we forgot about to get, forget about creak, the creaking sound when the door opens up. So for rain, export that for action, and we'll call that ending muse. This is the music when we're at an ending screen. Uh, so technically, I will have the same music for the good ending or the bad ending. This music sounds a little bit more just for the bad ending. It's a little bit slower and sadder. I don't really think I might want that music for the good ending. So uh, that'll be up to you then to, to change if you want to have better music when the game is over. You'll just have to go back and replay the steps of what we did here to change the music to the in the good ending. Update and OK, and then the final wood creek, I'll call that creek1 S and D. I don't have any other creaking sounds, but if I later want to add more uh, different sounds of things creaking, um, I already set myself up that I'll have creek1, 2, 3, whatever.
update and OK. And just to review then, all of our sound needs to have some sort of linkage, some sort of instance name. Those are all done. The names can be whatever you want, but I'm putting Muse at the end of long music, and I'm putting SND at the end of short sound effects. Once we've got that, let's go back to our welcome screen, to our code. We'll go to the end of our code. We'll have a comment. Music code start. Music code end. So we'll we'll set up all of our code related to music in one little area. Um, for, for the purpose then to maybe copy and paste it a little easier, because if I want different music in different screens, different scenes, I need to have this code then in different places. We have variable referring to the, to the mp3 in the library. So first we make a variable that will hold the name of the music from the library. We gave it those linkage, aka instance names, so that then we can refer to it. So we'll say var welcome music colon Welcome underscore muse is equal to new welcome underscore muse parentheses. So this is the syntax that we need to write when we add music. Let's zoom in a little bit more. We need to have a variable. This can be called anything right here. So welcome music is the variable that I'm going to use in my code. And we have colon welcome muse. That's the name. That's the linkage. That's the instance name from the library. Now, normally, so don't write this, but normally, if I was writing var score colon number equals zero, so again, don't write this, but if we had this kind of variable, we're saying we've got a variable that's going to hold the score and it's a type number. This variable can only hold numbers, and it's set to zero. We have no score. Well, here we've got, we're going to have some music, and it's a type welcome music. This variable can only hold music related to something with that instance name, language. And then we are filling it with a new instance from the library. So we're taking the mp3 file and basically putting it into that variable. We did that with the tap frenzy game. We're going to do it again. So the game stuff that we did, the music stuff that we did for the previous game is going to be very similar with a couple different things. This is the re variable referring to the MP3. So then we'll have um, set number of plays and start position of music var welcome music play so we have a variable that's keeping track of which file will we play this one here then we're creating a variable how are we going to play that file this is where we set. Do we want it to start at the very beginning of the file? Most likely, that's when the song starts. But if I wanted to skip 10 seconds, I can set it to start at 10 seconds. And how many times to repeat? Probably several times. I want the music to just keep playing. I don't want it to play one time, and then it's silent the rest of the time. So that's what this variable is keeping track of. And we have to say of type colon sound channel. 
So this variable holds data of type sound channel. The one that I just deleted could hold data of numbers, and this one holds data related to that MP3, and this one holds data about sound channels, like what's the position, play, pause, etc. And so what we say here after the equals, welcome music dot play. Zero comma ten. So this is where we actually then play. We say there's some sound file. Welcome music from right here. Welcome music has that MP3 inside of it. So we're saying play the MP3 in that variable starting from position zero, so at the very beginning of the file, and then play it 10 times. So put that information in this variable so that later on we can pause the music, play the music, turn it off so that it doesn't conflict with another sound. And then keep track of the time or position of the music playing. Pausing and playing works. You know, I can take out my phone and play a song when I drive to class and then pause it when I park and then when I go back home, press play and it's, it's, it's at the exact moment when I turned off the car four hours ago. It, it kept track of it. On our, on our own players here, it's keeping track of, you play the music up to this amount of time, let's keep track of that variable. When you come back five hours later to play it, it knows to keep playing at that exact moment because it's keeping track, which we're about to do right here. We'll do var welcome music pause this is a number set at zero. When you when we first play the music the music starts at position zero beginning of the file. We have not paused the music yet, so it's set to zero. When we, when we launch the app and then, you know, pause the app to go back to the home screen here, it's going to keep track. What was the moment? What was that? What was the position of time, the moment in time that we paused? And it'll keep track of it. So when we return to the app, it will, um, it will know exactly when to return. Again, all of that, we did that in the Tap Frenzy game, so it's not totally new. In order for this to fully work, we will create a couple of event listeners. In the event in the event that the game starts versus in the event that it um, pauses. So next event listener to wait for the app to start and then play the music. So we have we have another instance of this native application dot native application dot add event listener Event capital E 
dot activate capital letters comma fn welcome music play that's gonna cut off right there I guess like that okay so uh, we've got a, an, another uh, we've got an event listener, but a little bit different than we've used so far in this game. But again, this is still code related to the previous game when we wanted the Tat Frenzy music to play. So we've got uh, something event listener. So this is just code that we have to use when we talk about like the 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 game itself, not what's happening in the game, but the app itself running. Let's listen or something when the game, when the app activates, when the app loads into memory, so event.activate. On the event of activating, on the event that the game is loaded into the memory, run a function. Function, welcome music play. We're going to have a function that starts the music playing. So the next line we have to explain that function welcome play music means something. So as usual, we've got that function code. Got one thing up here um, before we have this setting here. Just like on the uh, tap frenzy, we were setting what's the sound we're going to work with. Let's start to play it. Let's keep track of when we pause it. We needed one more thing here. Whoops. Before then, we deal with loading and unloading. We need one more thing. I'll get back to that in a moment. But just write this. Uh, we don't want the music to play um, right away, but we want to load up the music to be ready, but we don't want it to play yet. Playing and pausing the music will happen with these two event listeners that we'll write in a moment, but forgot to write, forgot to add something up here. Let's back up. Before this, um, before this function, so after, after these three variables, after these three variables before the function, there's an empty spot here. I need one more thing, but don't play the music yet. And that is sound mixer dot stop all. This command right here will stop any music that's playing. So one way that we prevent music from overlapping when we go to the main game, the main scene one, we'll want to stop any music that's playing first and then play the music of that scene. Now here, this is the very, very beginning of the game, so what, why would I stop music? You have to think about it in terms of if a person plays this as they're supposed to, they're going to go through it one time, they might die, they play again. If you play again, it's going to go back to welcome. There's already music playing, eventually, from the game over screen. Then when we go back to the welcome screen, this welcome music wants to play, but the game over screen music would still be playing. So here we're just setting ourselves up for something that will eventually happen. Because again, I have this already prepared. I've taught this class for several years. I know how it's supposed to go. Um, you would have discovered yourself that as you add the music and so forth, and why are, why are two sounds playing at once? Because we never stopped the original sound before playing the new sound. That's what soundmixer.stopall does. Stop any music that may be playing because then what next follows is we're setting ourselves up to play the music only from the welcome screen. And that happens inside of the curly braces right here, which is welcome music play dot play
Actually, before we write that, um, we're going to forget this. So delete that. We'll write that in a moment. We're going to forget the parentheses. Um, that was jumping back and forth between these. Sorry about that. So let's go back here. Um, this function's missing stuff in the parentheses. Let's do that before we forget. So that's going to be event colon event. Whenever we're writing these functions, we have event colon something, usually event colon touch event, because this function needs to run after an, after an event. And previously, we had the event of touch event um, dot touch tap. Well, this function cares about music, which is this, uh, not, I mean, this function cares about when the app activates right here. So it's slightly different, event colon event, lowercase, uppercase, so confirm that. Then we'll get back to the parentheses right here. So it's easy to forget that. And we had uh, welcome music play equals welcome music dot play parentheses so this line looks similar to the one up here when we first defined it we had welcome music play it's a variable of type sound channel after we've defined it one time we don't have to define it again we just use it we said that that play music is going to start to play this mp3 file at position 0 10 times well we don't want it to play automatically so we're saying let's play the music which music the one in this in this mp3 file let's play in the what position well part of this activate is to when we pause and play the sound so that the music plays from the last moment and the last moment is welcome music pause so instead of it being zero we put in welcome music pause comma 10 the very first time the game loads up, welcome music pause is set to zero, the beginning of the file. When we go back and forth through the different screens and pausing it and so forth, this will keep track of a number. You've played 10 seconds of it. So that'll automatically say, okay, come back. When we come back to the game, start at 10 seconds instead of zero seconds. This is, creates the illusion of pausing and playing the music. because it's just playing the sound again, but at the last moment that we last heard it. Next lines, after this function, we need an event listener to wait um, for when we pause the app. So after those parentheses and curly braces, event listener, to wait for when we pause or exit the game. To set the welcome music pause variable. So we have an event listener that's listening for the moment that we start the game, start the music. When we pause the game, keep track of that moment so we can pause pause the, the music um, it's going to be similar as above native application dot native application dot add event listener It's going to be similar to above, so yes, I could copy and paste, but I'll have to change two things. Up here we had an activate. This is a function that runs when the app activates. Now we have the opposite of activate. What do you think the opposite of activate is? Deactivate. Deactivate. So we're going to have deactivate. And it's going to run a function. Instead of, welcome fun instead of function welcome music play, what's the opposite of play? Stop, Stop or pause. So those are the two things we're going to change in here. We'll say event dot deactivate, comma fn welcome music pause or stop. 
This is a function with dealing with turning on the music. I mean, this is an event listener dealing with turning on the music. This is an event listener dealing with turning off the music. Because it's so easy when we have our own, if I'm running Spotify or Pandora or whatever, and it knows exactly what, what moment to come back to, it was keeping track of it somehow. And we're seeing ourselves. This, this is one way to do it. We have to keep track with these variables that are storing a number. Function, welcome music, pause, parentheses, colon. Now here's something different, colon number. There's like only one place in this game, and there was one place in the previous game where it was not colon void. So be very careful here. This has to be a colon number because this function, when it does its thing, is keeping track of a number. Every other function that we had didn't had to didn't have to keep track of anything. Colon void is you know nothing. There's nothing there to keep track of. But this function has to keep track of a number. At what moment? At what millisecond? Do do if we pause the music? So we have colon number. The the parentheses in here are the same as above. Event colon capital event. So all of this setup is to be able to know at what millisecond, at what moment in time did we pause our music. So inside of the parentheses, inside of the curly braces of this function, we're going to say welcome music pause is equal to welcome music play dot position. When the game activates, we've got music that is playing. We said over here, play the music 10 times. Over here we're saying, what's the position? What time, what moment of time in milliseconds? There are 1,000 milliseconds in one second. So we can know exactly when the music paused, as at the moment that the drum hits at that exact millisecond. We're saying, let's keep track of that. What is the position of the music currently playing? Store it in that variable. So that we know when we return to the game when to start. Instead of stopping, you know, we start at, stop that position 112. When we come back, we'll come back at 112 and it'll keep playing there instead of at zero. So the next line. Sound mixer. Dot stop all. We are leaving the app to go back to our main device, so we no longer need that music to be to keep playing. I'm out of the app. Don't keep playing the music. So stop. Mix sound mixer stop all will do that. And then lastly, return. Return, welcome music, pause. We, uh, we did this effort of noting when we pause the music, the position of, of time. So when we actually deactivate the app, pause the app, we return that back to the main app so that when we start the, the game again, it knows welcome position has now been set to whatever that was. So this sort of feeds it back into this. If we play the game, we pause the game, this feeds the time back into this so that when we play the game again, it knows to start at position 400 instead of zero. Because originally, at the very beginning of the game, position is zero. Start at the beginning. But with this code, it'll keep track of when did we pause the game. Kind of a lot of code, like I said, music is a little complex and we're still not done because we need to play different music in different places.
But at this point, we should be able to stop and pause and test it and hear if we hear music on our device. And it will also be a good time for our break. So let me check that mine works first. If mine works, no errors. Good. If mine works, I'll pause in just a moment. I'll put my code into the folder in case you need it. And we'll do a little help. And let's just confirm mine works. Um, I should hear music on mine in a moment. Let me turn the volume up on mine, actually. Here we go. All right, so that's playing sound right here. If I press home to exit the game, the music should not continue to play. And then when I return back to the game, it continued at the moment I paused. Okay, so I pause there, I go back. It continues at that moment. So do you hear that? It did like a little drum sound. And I, when I go back, the drum is still reverberating. So uh, let me turn that back down. If you want to plug in headphones also to the tablet, you could if you want to. But mine seems to be working as, as it's expected. And it's all of this code, which is a lot, but um, it's about 225. Let's take a break until 235. I'm going to put my code into the folder in case you need it. I'm going to zoom in in just a moment. And we'll take a little break if it worked. If it didn't work, let's figure it out, then take a break. And then we'll be back in about 10 minutes.